Hi, welcome to part one in our three-part series on coin flipping, Bayesian probabilities, and priors. So, in science, we have hypotheses that we wish to test with experiment. For instance, maybe we have two hypotheses which each predict the value of some parameter p. So, for example, p might be the mass of the Higgs boson. Let's say that hypothesis 1 predicts the value of p to be v1, and hypothesis 2 predicts the value of p to be v2. So we do an experiment to measure the value of p to try to see if hypothesis 1 or hypothesis 2 is correct. But experiments have error bars, so in practice, when we do the measurement, we won't obtain exactly p equals v1 or p equals v2. For example, even if hypothesis 1 is correct, we probably won't measure p to be exactly v1, and it works the same way for hypothesis 2. Even if we measure p and obtain p equals v1, this probably won't rule out hypothesis 2 with 100% certainty due to the error bars on the measured value. Let's say we perform the experiment and measure the parameter p to have some value v, where we have some experimental uncertainty on v that we evaluate by carefully studying the precision of our experiment. We want to see what we can say about the prospects of hypothesis 1 and hypothesis 2 given this measured value of p. So this mini course will be a very basic introduction to how we determine the true values of physical parameters through measurement. We're going to do this through some thought experiments. We'll imagine that we have some weighted coins, each of which has certain unknown probabilities to come up heads or tails when flipped. Our challenge will be to determine these probabilities as best we can with just a few flips of the coins. These examples won't be all that realistic, but they are simple and touch upon important concepts in measurements, errors, and assumed probabilities of different outcomes, called priors. Here in part one, we will go over some basics in the probability of coin flipping. We'll get to our thought experiments in part two. Okay, so we take a coin. It has two sides, heads and tails. We flip it, and it has a certain probability of landing head side up, which we're going to call pH, and a certain probability of landing tail side up, which we're going to call pt. These two probabilities add up to one, if the probabilities are expressed as fractions, or to 100% if the probabilities are expressed as percents. So here we have an example where the probability pH for the coin to land head side up is 0.4 or 40%, and the probability pt for it to land tail side up is 0.6 or 60%. So let's take one of these coins with certain known values of pH and pt and flip it a few times. We take every flip of the coin to be independent, meaning that every flip has the same probability pH of coming up heads and the same probability pt of coming up tails. So whether a coin has come up heads five times in a row or came up tails three of the last seven flips, the probability for the next flip to come up heads is still pH and the probability for it to come up tails is still pt. So let's see what happens in a series of flips. So let's take a coin that has a 60% chance of coming up heads, so pH is equal to 0.6, or 60%, or 3 fifths, and a 40% chance of coming up tails, so PT is equal to 0.4, or 40%, or 2 fifths. This coin will come up heads in 60% of flips. Now, this doesn't mean that the coin will come up heads exactly 60% of the time in a particular sequence of flips. For example, if we flip the coin three times, it can't come up heads exactly 60% of the time, as that would be 1.8 flips. However, for a very long sequence of flips, it will usually come up heads very close to 60% of the time, and for a short sequence of flips, it will come up heads 60% of the time on average. So let's flip this coin three times. What is the probability of getting the sequence heads, tails, heads? To solve this, let's imagine that we flip the coin three times, write down our result, and then repeat the whole exercise over many trials, so many sets of three flips. Now, in 60% of those trials, we will have the first flip come up heads. And of those 60%, 40% of them will have the second flip come up tails. So 60% times 40%, which equals 24%, will have the first coin come up heads and the second come up tails. Of that 24%, 
60% will have the third coin come up heads. So 24% times 60% equals 14.4% of the trials will have the three flips come up heads, tails, heads. So to get the probability of a sequence, we multiply together a factor of pH for every flip coming up heads and a factor of pt for every flip coming up tails. So for this sequence that starts heads, tails, heads, heads, we would write down a product that begins pH, pt, pH, pH. Note that the order of the sequence doesn't affect the probability. In order to calculate the probability, you only need to know the number of flips that came up heads and the number of flips that came up tails. So if we flip a coin 10 times, any sequence that has five coins coming up heads and five coins coming up tails will all have the same probability, pH to the fifth, pt to the fifth. And that includes the perhaps unlikely seeming combination of having five coins in a row come up tails followed by five coins in a row come up heads. Okay, so now that we have those preliminaries out of the way, we're ready to do our thought experiment. We've already seen, for given values of pH and pt, what the probabilities are of certain sequences of coin flips. In part two, we're going to ask the reverse. If we flip a coin and get a certain result, what can we infer about its values of pH and pt?